Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible. I'm Tom Hollis, I'm the moderator, and today our panelists include... Dr. Weimar Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Ray Heipel, Providence Presbyterian Church in Robinson Township. Pete Jacaloni, South Hills Assembly of God Church, Bethel Park, PA. J. Anthony Gilbert, pastor of Another Level Ministries in the North Hills area. Well, pastors, thank you so much for being with us. So glad you made the time to take on these hard questions. To take on, we're taking on your calls from the hotline. I love this. I love when we go to the hotline. Let's dive into the first one. I'm a spirit-filled man, and my wife is not. I was praying with her to receive the Holy Spirit while well, she started to speak in tongues. And then right after that, a couple of days, I asked her to pray with me again, and I started speaking in tongues, and I said, join me. She said, no, I don't believe in it. I said, but you spoke in it. She says, I don't think so, and I don't believe in it. That is my question. Is that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit there? Because I'm scared to death. Not to death, but I'm scared for her salvation now. All right, well, there's a lot we can jump into here, Pastor Pete. I know we have articulate men on this panel. Sir, I want to really encourage you. That is not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There's something she's struggling with. She's, uh, I do believe, and I know there's others here that don't, I do believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is prevalent for today. She experienced something, and now she's, can I use the word reneging on it? That has nothing to do, that's not even close to blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. If you look at where it's found, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, as far as textually is concerned, is attributing the works of God unto Satan. That's what the scripture declares. So, sir, I noticed you were even fearful in, in your choice of words. No, just continue to love your wife, have an amazing marriage together, stay in the word together, and, and let her work this out in her own way. That's, that's, a good, that's some good counsel, Dr. Glaze. Yeah, I, I would agree with uh, Pete that uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is actually attributing uh, the miracles that Jesus mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. doing to Beelzebub. There you go. And, uh, and so that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I would uh, assure you that your wife hasn't, hasn't no, committed not that. not even close. Yeah, but I would also say, because I know we have different uh, sure. opinions and different thoughts here, that uh, I've never spoken in tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that, you know, in my prayer life, you know, I feel the closeness to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel the spirit of God. I feel like I'm communicating uh, with God. So, you know, n not saying that you, you know, I, and again, I know there might be some differences on mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. that you have to speak in tongues, you know, in order to, you know, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, I just, you know, as I read the scripture and in my own personal you know, relationship with Christ, you know, I, I, I feel that closeness to God. Uh, I feel that uh, connection to him. And, and again, you know, maybe, I'm not sure where your wife is at, but you know, maybe she falls into that category. Well, she's certainly wrestling with it, right. you know, she's, and, and yeah. having questions about it, that's normal. There's nothing, yeah. nothing that's strange about that. It's certainly not in danger of losing her salvation or anything no. like that. Pastor Ray. Yeah. and. Um, you know, I would take the position, just to be straightforward with you, that tongues were a gift for the first century during the giving of Revelation, a confirming sign and miracle um, like prophecy and so forth. And when the canon uh, was completed, it ceased. But I could be wrong on that. I mean, I'll, I'll freely say that. I could be wrong. Tongues could be active. But even if they are, I would say to the caller, uh, you're really not being very fair to your wife at all. I mean, even in 1 Corinthians 12, if tongues are still active. Paul says, do all speak in tongues? Do all have miracles? Do all have healings? You know, they don't, he says. Some are different body parts. He mm. says, the, you know, the foot shouldn't say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body. And he do, that's all in the same context. Mm. You know, so to say that your wife, you know, doesn't have the spirit, every believer has the spirit. Whether or not the spirit is giving a particular gift is a, is a particular issue that we can debate. But, you know, even the apostle Paul, who says in Corinthians 14, 
I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. However, I'd rather speak five words with my go. mind than 10,000 words in its tongue. And then he says, eagerly desire the greater gifts. It may be, sir, that your wife has been given greater gifts than tongues. Maybe she's been given a gift of faith or hope or love and you're down here with this lower gift and she's up here with this higher gift and she's actually a lot closer to the Lord. So I would be very careful in judging someone uh, spiritually, even questioning their salvation because they don't have a manifestation that even the apostles said is not for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, again, it's pretty normal, Pastor Jay, for someone to wrestle with this whole idea of uh, speaking an unknown tongue and, and that sort of thing. I believe in it, but it, it, it can be confusing for someone. Well, I believe in it as well. And I want to say something real quick. I think it's important for people to understand is can we stop getting tripped up over things that, I love what you said before we came out here, things that are maybe important to us, but they're not essentials. Yeah. You know, one of my best friends is right here, Dr. Ray Heifel. And we have a lot of differing views on things that are not essential. Mm -hmm. They're not essential. We don't need to divide our families. Preach it. Preach it, we don't brother. need to divide our, our marriages mm -hmm. and everything else over things. Well, you're talking, oh, I can't have any conversation. <laughs> I can't have any conversation with you. Like you're an all millennials. I'm a pre-trib guy. They're not, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're right. I mean, nobody has the total. Wait a minute, Ray's an all millennials? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, stop the show right now. <laughs> but I want everybody to know though, we yeah. love each other on yeah. this pan yeah. panel. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. see so many people get into division, mm -hmm. almost like they yeah. think, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm pre-trip, they're post-trip, oh, they're going to hell. It's like, wait a minute, come on. Mm -hmm. And I would have them in my pulpit any day of the week. Absolutely. Any day of the week, yes. twice on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's one of the things I just wanted to make sure I mentioned it to everybody. Yeah. Don't, even if you do agree, don't let it be a dividing factor where your marriage, your family, all that stuff. The key is, do they know Jesus? Amen. Have they accepted him into his heart? Is he the only way to the Father? The essentials of the faith. Mm -hmm. Let everything else work itself up. As you would say, it's, you're a pan, a pan. Uh, I'm a pan trip. It's all going to pan, pan out. out. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I would say, you know, uh, Pete and I disagree on, sure. on stuff. And, but we did a funeral together that on, was fun. Uh, on yeah. Monday. And uh, I mean, you know, I, I talked like he was my best friend. He yeah, talked yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so, you know, I mean, again, you know, we, yeah. we have differences, but yeah. you know, that hasn't and hindered our fellowship. I with all of these guys <laughs> about everything. So, <laughs> no, really good and good question too. But uh, yeah, absolutely, you know, have mercy on your wife there as she's uh, wrestling yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, let's go on to our next one. I wanted to know, if we as human beings have the authority to dispatch ministering angels to protect us and to assist us at all times. Well, we might have differences of opinion on this too, but go ahead, Pastor Jay. Well, you know, I, this is the way I look at that. I, there's no scripture that says, you know, no. tell the angels to go. Um, I think some people do it as a practice. You know, it's kind of like pleading the blood. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's yeah. the same type of thing. Do I believe in the blood, pleading the blood? I do it. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to yeah. say I'm going to teach, teach a doctrine on it. Yeah. You know, I can't say, well, the Bible said Jesus said to plead the blood. <laughs> you know, I believe what I'm doing in those moments is yeah. I'm reinforcing what I know the Bible is already doing. Yeah. So, like, do I believe that there's angels charged around about us? Of course I do. Do I believe in angelic activity mm -hmm. around us and protecting us at times? Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that you can say, hey, my angel, I, I had one guy said his angels were uh, Spike and Fang. <laughs> and that was his name. So he said, you mess with me, you mess with Spike and Fang. You know, now, do I believe you can awesome. have theological, uh, you know, say I'm going to preach that from that. But do I believe that we have angels? Without a doubt. I mean, the Bible says that they're there to minister to us, but to command yeah. them, I don't believe the Bible gives us the authority to, and that we can back then say, you can do what you want to do. No, I don't believe that. All right, that's good. Ray's going to try to kill this fly that just oh, landed I was, was going to wait till the camera turned off and said you called me. Oh, you got it. There you go. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. There, that's Bazelzebub. I, I took the minion. I took the minion over that fly. As we continue to talk about angels, um, you know, uh, again, and I think that can't, comes back from a couple of denominations about guardian angels yeah. that he'll give. But again, we, we, that's what Satan said to Jesus in his temptation. He will give his angels charge over thee, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So the, the point is, like you, Jay, do I believe angels exist? Yes. Yep. Do I believe I have authority to command them? I don't know. Uh, and, and I mean that sincerely. But this is what, what Moses said in Exodus. Uh, God said, I will send an angel. If you look at the context, it's Exodus chapter 3 and, and verse 2 on, 2 all the way to 14. Moses comes to the conclusion. He says, listen, I, if I can paraphrase, I'm not concerned about an angel. 
He says, if your presence. That's right. So I would say to the body of Christ, don't get wrapped up in angels when you can live in the presence of God. That is so good. Uh, good answers, good, good question. Way to go, Ray, kill not fly. Uh, <laughs> well, we're gonna come back in just 60 seconds and uh, we talk about backsliding and we talk about the rapture. Stay tuned. Oh. You're welcome here. Uh, you can be a welcome sure. back to the show. We're taking your calls from the Hard Questions Hotline. And if you would like to leave us your question, I really encourage you to. You can call 412-349-4326. 412-349-4326. We'd love to answer your question on the air. So let's go to our next one. The Old Testament, book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 22 says, Return, you backsliding Christian, your backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. What does the Bible mean, Tom, when it says that God will heal backsliding? Well, thank you for the question. I think we're gonna we're gonna deal with that. Let's start with Pastor Ray. Yeah, the Bible often describes um, salvation or life even as a path, as a journey. Yeah. You know, the, the path of the righteous is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. And, and Satan always tells us to get out of the path, turn away from the Holy One of Israel and so forth. And, and uh, the, the concept of backsliding there, and it's in several different books of the Bible, it literally just means the sons of turning back. You know, and we translate it and we, you know, make it the word backsliding in English because to backslide is to go backwards uh, when you're supposed to go forwards. Mm -hmm. And that's really the concept that's being talked about there. And, and God is uh, admonishing his people. And you see that over and over again in Jeremiah. Um, and I'll give you an, another verse. A voice was heard on the desolate, height, desolate heights, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. They've forgotten the Lord. Return, you backsliding children. And so that's, that was the issue. They were sinning. They were walking in sin. They were turning away from God, and it's described as backsliding. But, you know, the call is always repent. Turn, which is also turn. Yeah. Turn back to God. Right. And what will yeah. God do? Well, it says there, heal your backsliding. So what does that mean? I think that what that means is he'll forgive your sins. Right. Yeah. You know, he'll forgive the fact that you were in sin you know, backsliding and God will forgive you. And that's always the call of the gospel is turn away from sin, no matter what you've done, God will forgive you. Yeah. You know, I also think with that too, in that passage, there's the context of, um, he says, return unto me and it's, I will give you shepherds after my own heart. I think a lot of people have backsliding in Ooh, their good, lives good, good. because they don't have shepherds mm -hmm. and there's a healing. There's something, he gave us the five-fold ministry gift for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification. You know, so he talked about till we no longer be children mm -hmm. tossed, tossed to and fro. Yeah. I just finished a book, another book, my third one, and it's called Obtaining Your Inheritance and Why Church Membership is Important. It's not yeah. your status quo one. It's yeah. why we have pastors. Yeah. Why you why God selects a church home for you, I believe. And I believe part of the reason why we backslide, some people jump from church to church to church because they don't understand the difference between offense and when they're actually being convicted. And so there's a difference <laughs> between a the point. two. So I think that's where he's also yeah. going with this. Yeah. And I think it's very important that we notice that, that backsliding, man, we keep going, why do we keep going back? Because you don't have anybody feeding you to develop you and to grow you and to become the person you need to become. Well, that's so good. I, th I think what we're, what probably is inherent in the question too is we've known people that have walked with the Lord. Pastor Glaze, in your church, you probably had people walk with the Lord and then turn kind of back to the world. And what, what is that? And how does how the Lord deal with backsliding? Right. Yeah, I was going to say the, the literal Hebrew mm -hmm. here is turn, turn, ye turn children, and I will heal your turnings. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that, that word, Hebrew word, shows up about four times in there, the whole idea of turning. Mm -hmm. And so even in our congregations, you know, you have people that have turned away from the Lord. And, you know, I, I guess we could get into that whole thing about yeah, losing your we salvation. Would, yeah. uh, well, we probably won't go there. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> but, but I would say, you know, I believe in, you know, that a Christian can truly backslide. And that is turn away from the Lord and not follow after him. But, you know, God's call to them is to turn back. You know, mm -hmm. you, you turn away, you turn your back on the Lord. You've turned the, from the presence or the face of the Lord. Now turn back, 
you know, to and him. He will abundantly pardon. Yeah, you know, yeah, I love yeah. that yeah. scripture. I think, I think one of the and this 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 portion of scripture really aches my whole spirit. One of the signs of the end times is that mm -hmm. the apostasy mm -hmm. great falling away. And, and a great falling away. And, you know, that as a pastor, that saddens me, yeah. you know, yeah. because they've tasted of they've they've mm -hmm. something has taken. And then for some reason, and I'm not here to examine why, but all. And I think that's the reason why we need to continue to encourage our people to continue to flame. Uh, uh, what's that about the flame of faith? Fanning. 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 That's the uh. word. Continue to fan that flame. Keep burning for Jesus. That's good. God does not want us to backslide, but no. wants us to follow strong after him. All right, let's go to the next one. Hi, I was calling. My question is, I was reading somewhere where it says that the rapture is never mentioned in the Bible at all. <laughs> So um, I was just curious as to where we can find that in the Bible or how we know that that's what it's actually referring to is, is the, the rapture itself, what scripture refers to that. All right, this is, this is really, this, I, I've been studying this lately. <laughs> it's, okay. it's been, uh, I've been teaching on Wednesday night, but Pastor Glaze, why don't you go ahead? Well, you know, you're absolutely right that the word, word rapture does not appear in the Bible, just like the word Trinity uh, doesn't appear in the Bible. But just like the concept of the Trinity mm -hmm. is in the Bible, so the concept of the rapture is in the Bible. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, there was some concern about loved ones who had died. And Paul was comforting them to say, well, you know, you don't need to sorrow mm -hmm. as people that have no hope uh, because the Lord is, is coming back, you know, for, for, them, for you and to come and resurrect their bodies. And then he says in verse 17, uh, then we who are alive, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, mm -hmm. 17, mm -hmm. then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the word. Now, the, the, the word rapture comes from the Latin word, uh, raptio, uh, and that means to be caught up or snatched away. So that's where we get the, the word rapture from. But here, the Greek word is harpazo, and it actually means to snatch up, catch to you. seize, or to catch up. So again, even though the word rapture is not there, the word harpazo actually would mean the same thing as rapture, you know, to be caught up or snatched up. They even use the word harpazo in some other instances where it's not talking about uh, spiritual right. uh, catching up. Yeah. But yeah, yeah Pete. And I agree exactly. Ma'am, if you want to be uh, semantically Correct. Then just go with catching away. There's there's going to be a catching away. If you don't want to use the word rapture, there's going to be a catching away of the church, a snatching up into heaven. Yeah, right. And so the, and let me just we can talk about this maybe a little deeper. What is what is the rapture versus the second coming? And, and that's what I'm thinking that maybe she's coming from. You know that she's has someone telling her that there's no such thing as a as a secret rapture or something like that. Um, and you know, there's all kinds of differences in the church on, on when the Lord will return. But as, if what we mean by rapture is that there will be people who will be caught up into the air. You know, I think Dr. Glaze read the verse. Uh, in fact, I would go to the uh, verse 16 just to set it up a little bit more. For the Lord himself That's will true. descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. So that happens first. And then verse 17, as Dr. Glaze read, then we who are, then after that, right after that, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So that's really going to happen. Now, the way I understand that Jesus is returning because it says he is descending and there's his army right behind him. And then, you know, the trumpet sounds, I think Paul says the, it's the last trumpet first. Corinthians 15, 51, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, we shall not all die, but we shall be changed. That's the rapture, we'll be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of the eye, Paul says, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. So he's talking about the same thing. So we know it's the last trumpet. Jesus is on his way. The dead are raised up first, then the living mm -hmm. Christians, mm -hmm. and I do believe that there, it will be a great time of yeah. persecution and, yeah. and falling away, but there will be some believers left and they will be um, caught up into the train as Christ is coming down. So I think, you know, we have to affirm a second coming of Christ and 
and, the, and a snatching up of believers. I think sometimes believers get caught up on, we don't believe in the rapture because we don't believe in a kind of rapture. But you got to believe in the fact that Jesus is coming no back. No question. Jesus is coming back. Yeah. But just real quickly, I think, uh, it, I think they've all pretty much covered it. I think what's amazing, we're the generation that's going to witness that. And the Bible talks okay. about how in 1948, when Israel became a nation, that that generation will not pass until all the things Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24 be fulfilled. So what's exciting is whenever it happens, however it happens, we are going to be a part of it if uh, we are blessed to live long enough to see that before that generation passes. I get chills just hearing you say he's going to descend with a shout Amen. with the voice of the archangel. Amen. That is just... Amen. There'll be some fear of the Lord on that day. Yeah, yeah. Amen. No, there's some throwing things there. Thank you so much for the question. Well, coming up in 60 seconds, we ask, are we truly called to turn the other cheek? Maybe we'll demonstrate <laughs> it here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Hard Questions. Let's go now to our last heart hotline question. Yes, I would like to know what does God mean when he says turn the other cheek? Hmm. Okay, well, Dr. Glaze, let's let's hear uh, some some thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I, I've always uh, I'm reminded of this story about this prize fighter, who uh, just was a champion boxer, and uh, he got saved and he stopped boxing. And there were some people that hated him. You know, they just hated the way that he won. And so a guy went up and said, "Hey, I heard you're a Christian," and he slapped him on the cheek. And uh, and the boxer said, he said, Jesus told me to turn the other cheek. But after that, I have no further instructions. <laughs> yeah, you only got one other thing. <laughs> so, uh, so prepare. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would say that it, it means to, uh, you know, forego uh, retaliation. Amen. You know, for personal offenses. You know, it's actually a metaphor. That means when, you, when you've been offended, instead of, you know, uh, you know, rail for rail, insult for insult, that you... In a uh, metaphorically turn yeah. the other cheek. You know, I'm, I'm always reminded of uh, back in the day when they would have those sword fights and they would slap the guy on yeah. the face and say, I challenged you to a duel, you know, and uh, and that always ended in bloodshed. It always ended in death. And I think that, you know, when we have offenses and, and we have people who have done things to us that it can end in spiritual bloodshed. And Jesus says, instead of saying, uh, you know, I challenge you to a duel, you know, just turn the other cheek. Yeah, I mean, it's a Alexander Hamilton, he got yeah. killed from, from one of those. Yeah. yeah. I also think too, what, it's the spirit behind what yeah, Jesus yeah. was yeah. saying. Like, yeah. you know, if somebody does you wrong, give them another chance. Yeah. It's giving them another opportunity. And that doesn't mean every person just like whatever they do to you, do, but it's having the spirit that says, mm -hmm. if somebody does you wrong, if they're willing to reconcile, you're opening yourselves up. It's all dealing with forgiveness. It's all dealing with our hearts not being tempered and tainted uh, with that offense, as you mentioned, Dr. Glaze, that we don't allow that offense to say, I'm not giving them another chance. No, that's it. I'm done. Or I'm going to retaliate on top of that. Either one of those. But it's opening yourself saying, here's a fresh new start. You know why? Because his mercies are new every morning. Ours need to be as well. We need to be able to say, hey, listen, even though I, you have done me wrong, you know what? I have another cheek that I've made available to you. And God, I've done you wrong, but it's every day. There's a brand new side to him that we get a chance to embrace because of his mercy and grace. I, I really like that. I do want to ask this because sometimes people take this and they say, well, I'm just not supposed to ever respond. I'm just supposed to okay. be taken advantage yeah. of. I'm supposed to be abused. What would you say to that? Yeah, and I, you, you know, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And yes. there are several things that yes. Jesus says in that sermon that you, I've heard abused many times. Or, or even just, you know, Christians really innocently misunderstanding, you know, judge not lest ye be judged. When you give, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. When you pray, go into your closet, let no one see you. You know, over and over again, these, you know, hyperbolic type statements that are number one to individuals in their individual relationships. As you said, Jay, when Jesus says, judge not lest ye be judged, he's not saying there should be no judges in the world. There should be no courts in the world. There should be no p punishing of criminals. He's saying you and your particular life should not go around condemning 
harming other there people, you, yeah. you know, uh, and, and you, when they, they turn the other cheek, I would agree with what Jay said, uh, you know, it's not um, that you shouldn't go around and get vengeance for yourself, you know, but you are allowed to defend yourself if someone right. attacks you, you know, it's not speaking to that. So you can't hyper literalize these things and make them work for all things. Jesus is talking about pride, right? About vengeance, you know, as you said, Dr. Glaze, you know, we're not to take vengeance, we're to love our enemies, do good to them. That's, that's another way to say, turn your other cheek, love your enemy, do good to them, uh, and so forth. You know, don't let your right hand know what your left is giving. Don't be proud when you give and, and sound the trumpet so everybody can see how I much love you're when giving. Jesus uses like, you know, camels with the eye of a needle yeah. and the These log in your own eye and things yeah. like yeah. that really would stick with people. What do you say about this? Oh, I know we only got a minute. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I can do this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can do They're going to shut the lights off whether you do it or not. So. Here's the point. It, it seems like as pastors, and, I, and I'm not meaning this and being wrong, it seems there's days where people just love to take their pot shots, specifically at pastors. We all take our pot shots at each other. I have learned this over the years. Instead of retaliating, when somebody comes up and takes a pot shot at me, I'll say this, brother, if you said that to hurt me, I want you to know you succeeded. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. then leave it go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. That's yeah. turning the other cheek. In other words, instead of coming back with a retaliation, yeah. Yeah. I, and sometimes I'll grab them by the arm and say, you got me. You really got me. Yeah. And then, then if they want to repent, it's up to them. Well, I think that's, uh, that's really good. I, I've heard it said this way, respond in the opposite spirit. Respond yeah. in the spirit that yeah. you are being responded to in and, uh, and show the love of Christ. But don't let yourself be abused either. Well, today yeah. we go to the Psalms for our final scripture. And it says this, uphold me according to your word that I may live and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe, Psalm 119. We hope you enjoyed our program. We'd love to hear your hard questions. Please email us or call us on the hotline.